Hi, I'm Lori Adams, and I'm the president of the Pollinator Partnership. But I'm talking to you right now about the really wonderful accomplishment of 20 years of the North American Pollinator Protection Campaign. You know, it started really with the Forgotten Pollinators campaign that was launched uh, by Steve Buckman and Gary Naban with their book, The Forgotten Pollinators. They were really the first people who uh, thought to look at the population of pollinators and assess its health and its needs and its diversity. Uh, rather than just looking at what pollinated what plant, they really looked at what was the condition of pollinators overall and they were pretty horrified by what they found. They had uh, an influence on the uh, National Zoo, which held a meeting on pollinators. And fortunately for all of us, Paul Growald and Gab Gabby Chavaria were seated next to each other, came out of that meeting and decided something really needs to be done to bring people together. So they launched the North American Pollinator Protection Campaign. And it was my privilege to be the person who was helpful in making that uh, a reality. And our first meeting was uh, at the behest of E.O. Wilson, uh, one of Paul's contacts. We sent out the invitation with his name on it. Uh, and we uh, worked with the National Academies of Sciences then, but we met in the basement of the Holiday Inn in Georgetown. And it was a small group, about 40 really wonderful people some of whom you're gonna hear from today. And I think the people in NAPSI have made a huge difference because they were all people who wanted to work together even if they didn't agree on everything. They looked for common ground and that's been one of the NAPSI really hallmarks, how to solve problems by bringing all the stakeholders together even if they don't agree with one another to look for ways to have progress. And uh, as I said, you're going to hear from some of the early people, uh, Paul and Gabrielle, uh, Gabriella and uh, Steve Buckman. And you'll also hear from Rodrigo Medellin. Uh, you'll hear from Peter Kevin, so that is representing Canada and Mexico. Uh, but you'll also hear from uh, Chip Taylor, who, what a great, a great asset he is to the whole world. Um, and you'll also hear from Kevin Hackett, who was absolutely instrumental, along with Sue Hazeltine, in making sure that the National Academy of Sciences NRC study uh, actually happened. So there have been a lot of accomplishments. Uh, there's been a lot of fun. Food has played an important role in our get-togethers. Uh, Forty of us went to the very first sustainable restaurant in uh, the organic, first organic restaurant in the United States in Washington, D.C., uh, restaurant Nora. And we all felt as if we were really on the cusp of history. This was the future. And we were right. Sustainability and organic restaurants have now proliferated. And so this was the start. And I want to remind people, it started just at the beginning of the internet. This was not something that benefited from the internet until it kind of got rolling. So it's been a changed world, but it's been a real family that's developed. And today we're celebrating that family. Uh, as I said, we went out for dinner together. Sometimes the food for the meetings didn't quite show up. One time uh, we met at EPA and our food was trapped in a truck that was in a building that had a bomb scare. Uh, one time at USDA, we had much less food than was ordered show up and about uh, you know, a handful of sandwiches showed up for 60 people. One time at the State Department, we were eating, uh, the steering committee was able to eat in uh, the official dining room of the State Department, but they had forgotten to order the food. So it's been a metaphor for how important pollinators are to food. It's helped reinforce that we want to make sure we have a sustainable future with agriculture and with ecosystems. So I want to welcome all of these remembrances to help us remember where we started, but also where we're headed. And I, I think we'll all appreciate there's a lot more work to, done, to be done, but there is a lot to celebrate as well. So thank you for joining us today for this 20th anniversary celebration. 
Hello, my name is Paul Growald. I'm delighted to observe the 20th anniversary of the first NAPSI meeting. From the beginning, it's been quietly and capably nurtured under the wings of the pollinator partnership that I founded and Laurie Adams has managed. The idea to create a pollinator protection campaign was hatched by me and Gabriela Chavarria, who was then at the National Fish and Wildlife Foundation. This happened during a symposium on biodiversity in 1997 at the National Academy of Sciences headquartered in Washington. Over a boxed lunch that we shared on the steps outside the Academy, we agreed that a broadly based campaign would be helpful to promote awareness and action to help protect pollinators in the United States, in Gabby's home country, Mexico, and in Canada. As we conceived it, something was urgently needed to bring together individuals from a diverse group of stakeholders who were already passionate about pollinators and who could work together to protect them. The idea was to include people from academia, business, conservation, environmental organizations, and government agencies, each of whom could justify their participating in this effort as a part of their regular jobs. That brought me to ask the Board of Directors of the Coevolution Institute's Pollinator Partnership and its Executive Director, Lori, to create what became NAPSI. They all readily agreed. Lori then did a masterful job in attracting dozens of individuals to begin working together to elevate awareness and promote action to protect pollinators. One of the not notable accomplishments of NAPSI was reducing the tensions between groups who are passionate about honeybees on one hand and those who are um, engaged in protecting and learning about and studying native pollinators on the other. Up until the creation of NAPSI, the two were often antagonistic, but within a few years of working together, that antagonism virtually disappeared. Another major accomplishment that flowed from the National Academy meeting and the first NAPSI conference was that Peter Raven, who was both Home Secretary of the Academy and a longtime head of the Missouri Botanic Garden, spearheaded the creation of an authoritative report on the status of pollinators in North America. It took a full 10 years for that process to be launched and released. The report by that committee of scientists led by May Berenbaum was an historical development because especially within a short time after it was published, honeybee colony collapse disorder first emerged. It provided journalists with an authoritative source of information about the decline of honeybees and also the vast number of native pollinators and their importance to human beings and to nature. NAPSI also created a wide network to bring attention to the study and the importance of pollinators of all kinds. I've been thrilled to watch how NAPSI has blossomed into such an effective force for the protection of these largely unrecognized creatures who are indispensable to both nature and healthy ecosystems, as well as human beings. Congratulations to everyone who's been involved. I thank you, I think of you with gratitude each time I see images of butterflies in a shop window or a woman's dress, bees on a greeting card, or hummingbirds in a calendar, and also flying around inside my own garden. I wish you all, and particularly the creatures who are working to protect, we are all working, we have been working to protect improved health and vitality now and far into the future. Hello, NAPSI members. I'm Gabi Chavarria. I was co-chair of NAPSI with Paul Growell uh, when NAPSI first started. Paul and I met at a National Academy of Sciences back in 1996. I was working for the National Fish and Wildlife Foundation, and we got to talk about pollinators immediately. Uh, we both uh, had read the book, The Forgotten Pollinators by Gary Napkin and Steve Buckman. And we decided that we wanted to do something together uh, to protect all pollinators. So the idea started and the following year in 1997, uh, he and I co-hosted 
uh, lunch at the National Zoo, where we invited a whole array of different stakeholders uh, in Washington to hear Gary and Steve talk about, you know, the forgotten pollinator books and the need to do something uh, for pollinators. So that was the beginning of the seed, the beginning of the conversation that, you know, little we knew that it was going to turn out into this incredible effort that you are all part of. And you have done so much in the last 20 years to protect all pollinators, not only in the United States, but also in Canada and in Mexico. So I know you haven't done it alone. You had had, you know, Lori and her incredible team uh, at the Pollinator Partnership. And I just, you know, wanted to congratulate you for all of your incredible work and wish you well. Happy 20th anniversary. And please keep the work going because all of those pollinators uh, need your help. Thank you. Hello, pollinators. And happy 20th anniversary to NAPSI, the North American Pollinator Protection Campaign. Wow, what a crazy year it is. Hope everyone is staying safe. Hi, this is Steve Buckman, and I'm with the University of Arizona, and I've been with NAPSI since the very start, since 1999. I don't want to be a to talking head for this whole thing, so what I'm going to do is give you a little slideshow and some voiceover narration and throw in some video clips of pollinators in action, which I hope you'll like. Please keep in touch. Drop me a line at buckman.steven.gmail.com. Paul and Gabby Chavaria, who got NAPSI started way back in 1999. I fondly remember taking photographs at annual NAPSI meetings with Dave Inouye. There we are, photojournalists. Working with NAPSI committee members and artist Steve Buchanan on the many annual posters was fantastic. Such beautiful posters. It was my honor to work with artist Steve Buchanan to pick pollinators and flowers for the amazing USA pollinator postage stamps. Fourteen of us worked on the status of pollinators in North America for the National Academy of Sciences. And thanks to Lori Adams and Larry Stritch and so many NAPSI members, we have National Pollinator Week, which is just incredible. Every year, we celebrate National Pollinator Week at the Tohono Chill Park in Tucson, Arizona. We helped create the feature film Wings of Life, thanks to Ted Fleming, Dave Rubick, and Chip Taylor. Birds can hover to feed and maneuver like airborne dancers. Every year for the past 20 years, I've been one of the co-instructors for the American Museum of Natural History's The Bee Course. My very first book was The Forgotten Pollinators, co-authored with Gary Nabhan. It started it all for me. Another fantastic project was the Bee Basics booklet with Beatrice Mose and illustrated by artist Stephen Buchanan. In 2015, I wrote The Reason for Flowers, which has been translated into a number of languages. And I'm happy to announce that my next book, What a Bee Knows, will be published by Island Press in spring of 2021. I consider myself a Polynesian ecologist, but hey, pretty much, I'm a bee guy. I've worked with my friend, Tucsonan Greg Corman, a landscape architect, and we've created bee exhibits for many public venues. Check out some of these amazing Sonoran Desert bees.
Here's a Bombus impatiens, buzz pollinating a deadly nightshade blossom. I apologize, there was sound, the incredible buzzing sound, but ah, uh, it's not here. Some of my favorite foods, buzz pollination does indeed help feed the world. We're now investigating the brood cell microbiome, bacteria and yeasts that keep bees alive, keep them healthy. The amazing things that we found is that bees are omnivores. They're getting more nutrition from eating bacteria and yeast than they do by eating pollen. And besides writing and photography, for the past year I've been learning to fly a drone. Hey, my new tripod in the sky. I also enjoy making small fine art bronzes at a local Tucson foundry. Hello, my name is Rodrigo Medellin and I am a professor at the National Autonomous University of Mexico in Mexico City. I work on the ecology and conservation of mammals and many other wildlife in Mexico and many other countries. And part of my work has to do with pollinating bats, an amazing group of 12 species of bats in Mexico and four species in the United States that pollinate agaves, century plants, columnar cacti, and hundreds of other ecologically and economically important species of plants, including the agave from which we obtain tequila and mezcal and that we all enjoy and love and drink responsibly. Pollinating animals touch every day of our lives. From the food and drink that we consume, to the clothes that we wear, to the ornaments around our garden and homes, pollinators are present in our lives. We see pollinators every day around us, from bumblebees to hummingbirds to, of course, bats if you live in Mexico or in the Southwest of the United States. They bring happiness and they bring life in this quarantine process. They provide services and benefits that nobody appreciates and nobody repays. The issue now is that we are witnessing an environmental crisis of planetary proportions and this crisis is indeed affecting pollinators everywhere. The North American Pollinator Protection Campaign was created 20 years ago precisely to curb and reverse the decline of pollinators in North America. And it involves the work of hundreds of organizations and individuals who work nonstop to protect pollinators, networking with farmers, government agencies, universities, NGOs, and the general public. In Canada, Mexico, and the United States, NAPSI is very active and has been instrumental in creating programs to protect pollinators in agriculture, in cities, in wild ecosystems, and more. Some of the wonderful results and products coming from NAPSI include the postal stamps. That is a series of four stamps that depict uh, pollinators in beautiful, beautiful illustrations. These stamps are an amazing instrument that, reach, that have reached millions of people in the region. Also, the report on the conservation status of pollination have been crucial to plan, promote, and expand pollinator conservation actions. Get involved. We celebrate National Pollinator Week every June, and there are dozens of guides to help you help pollinators in your garden by telling you which plants in your region are the best to feed pollinators? They need it. They need you. Visit pollinator.org for more information. Hello, I'm Kevin Hackett, National Program Leader for Crop Entomology for the USDA Agriculture Research Service. Crop entomology includes the good, the bad, and the ugly insects and other arthropods. And it's most fun to talk about the good ones, our pollinators. Thank you, NAPSI. I'm honored that you invited me to give this North American Pollinator Protection Campaign Remembrance video. I had been on my B program assignment less than a year when Laurie Adams approached me about 
funding a study at the National Academies of Science, Engineering, and Medicine. Lori, who I had not met, and NAPSI, which I was not yet aware of, were encouraging the National Academies to conduct a study to determine the status of pollinators, to determine factors that might be leading to declines of bees and other pollinators. This was before colony collapse disorder. My administrator at the time fortunately agreed to provide funding from the ARS account to support the National Academy study. This together with funding that Sue Hazeltine at the US Geological Survey provided made the study possible. It actually took three years to squirrel away enough funding to get started. NAPSI supplied the National Academies with a suggested list of experts in each of the pollinator categories. I believe half of the final panelists were NAPSI members. The study itself was apparently the brainchild of Paul Grawell and the NAPSI task force, and NAPSI insisted that it cover all of North America, a first for the National Academies and that it covered many more pollinators than just honeybees. It was chaired by May Berenbaum, department head at the University of Illinois, and was successfully completed in 18 months, which is excellent time for such a broad undertaking. I went to every listening session that was held across the country and heard testimony from experts everywhere. Since I was new to leadership of, poll of the pollinator program at USDA, this was a great education for me. The resulting 2007 report entitled Status of Pollinators in North America is still one of the most cited National Academy studies. It highlighted the importance of pollinators in a new way, emphasizing their economic and ecosystem service values. We thank NAPSI for bringing about this monumental and important work. Although I was new to leading the nation's bee research at ARS, I had been somewhat educated about bees, having helped my father run his 800 hive hobby business in New Jersey for pollination of cranberries and blueberries. Lugging around beehives, my father apparently did not believe in forklifts or even dollies. I later got my PhD at UC Berkeley, studying chalk root disease of alfalfa leaf cutting bees. I soon found out that the National Academies study and the release of its report was just the beginning of what would become an all-consuming education on pollinators, for the ink wasn't even yet dry on the report when the country and the beekeeping industry was struck with its pollinator pandemic, colony collapse disorder, devastating honeybee colonies, perhaps more aptly named beekeeper collapse disorder, beekeepers suffered huge losses. Would the beekeeping industry survive? Would we have enough bees to pollinate the nation's apples, pears, cherries, berries, vegetables, and other crops, especially, of course, the almonds? It was an extremely busy time for NAPSI and for me and anyone involved in pollination and pollinators. It was also exciting, sometimes a little too exciting, and I looked to NAPSI to help guide us through these troubled times. We are still on that troubled journey, still trying to save the honeybee from a myriad of stresses and see troubling signs about how our native pollinators are faring as well. Perhaps if there was anything good to come out of colony collapse disorder, it together with the National Academies report helped elevate public and governmental interest in the protection of pollinators of all kinds everywhere. I could cite the numerous projects and accomplishments of NAPSI since its inception, and the ones that as part of a NAPSI working group I initially participated in, such as BMD, the online diagnostic tool to help beekeepers identify honeybee health issues. But I think the most important accomplishment of NAPSI has been to provide a balanced approach to protecting our pollinators, while at the same time protecting agriculture and the natural ecosystems dependent on pollinators. Thank you, NAPSI. You were born at just the right time to help us through colony collapse disorder, while simultaneously keeping a focus on protecting our native pollinators. Doing this at a time of great passion, focusing that passion on goals common to all, a rare feat. I look forward to the next 20 years of NAPSI. And again, thank you for the invitation and all I am saying is, 
give bees a chance. Thank you, Napsi. My involvement in pollination goes back to my PhD time, uh, PhD studies in the in the high Canadian Arctic, about 500 miles south of the uh, North Pole. And uh, uh, following that, I got involved with uh, a, a conservation um, issue in New Brunswick to do with the blueberry farmers. And that uh, really took me into the conservation issues of pollination and pollinators. Uh, really uh, hook, line and sinker. Uh, the studies that came out of blueberry studies in New Brunswick were really the very first of the, uh, of the holistic view of pollination, pollinators and crop production and also the legal ramifications. That whole, uh, that whole event became a, uh, a, an important legal precedent in environmental law in Canada. Um, and uh, as a result of getting involved with that, um, I was in touch with, uh, with Steve Bachman uh, in respect of the Forgotten Pollinators campaign and my first involvement there took me to Arizona for a wonderful time workshop on the Forgotten Pollinators there, thanks to uh, Steve Bachman and the organizers. And uh, from there, then the North American Pollinator Protection Campaign started and I was invited to become one of the founders of that movement, which is of course still going on today. Great. Now, do you have any anecdotes to share about your time working with NAPSI? I, I think the first meetings that we had with NAPSI um, uh, were really interesting. They were really bringing people together uh, I was very fortunate in as much as I was uh, very familiar at that time with what was going on in Mexico and the people in Mexico who were working in pollination with pollinators and uh, also with Canada and with the United States. So I was uh, very much uh, able to sort of help bring people together across North America, so from Mexico uh, right up to Canada and that was sort of an anecdote in a way because I, ha I was uh, reminding NAPSI all the time that it was trinational, not just, uh, not just an American uh, um, yeah, initiative and uh, I was able to hold that together until we got more people involved from Mexico and uh, also more people involved from Canada. Great. Anything else to share? I think in an in involvement with NAPSI has been a very satisfying part of my life. I uh, think I've been able to contribute well, not in recent years. There have been so many other people uh, that have come along uh, since I was initially involved. There's uh, now a huge number of people interested in pollination and pollinators and conservation. I think when I started off, I could have counted my colleagues on uh, my fingers and toes, whereas now we, we number in the, in, in the thousands. So it has been uh, tremendous from that point of view and has been tremendous also from a point of view of my involvement in teaching about pollination um, with the trinational course that was uh, started in Mexico and uh, went forward in Mexico. Uh, for several years and then in Costa Rica and then uh, in Brazil for 12 years. The International Pollination Course has, uh, has had affiliations with NAPSI for all that period of time. So that has been, I feel very proud because in Brazil the students have actually taken on the course themselves. So that's really a, a, a tremendous legacy. Yes, you heard right. That's the theme from Star Wars. Sit up straight, all you eco-warriors, all you warriors for pollinators and monarch butterflies, and all you warriors for maintaining the status, of, status quo with regard to biodiversity. We need your help. We need all of you.
NAPSI needs all of you. Well, in fact, NAPSI has had all of you on board for years and years and years, and we thank you for your service. We thank you for your dedication to pollinators and monarch butterflies. We thank you for your interest in maintaining the system that supports us. A long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away, Laurie Adams called me and asked me to participate in a program known as the North American Pollinator Protection Campaign. I begged her to shorten the name somehow because I could not even remember what the letter stood for. But in any case, what she had to offer was a really good idea. And that was an idea that has come to fruition and has been very, very productive. We are living with a really productive and energetic and forward-looking organization. An organization composed of many federal agencies, a lot of NGOs, and other interested and committed parties. We have accomplished a lot working together, and we have a long way to go. One of my concerns is that we're not reaching the younger generation as well as we could. As you probably know, if you were around when it was done, we submitted two proposals to NSF for the creation of a curriculum for uh, primary schools and maybe even some secondary education. Both of those proposals went down. The first due to some sort of administrative problem. The second really due to um, uh, really unfortunate evaluations, things that just didn't make any sense, things that really diminished the value of this proposal. We need this educational opportunity, and I urge the, all of you in uh, NAPSI to consider going back to that proposal, going back to that initiative to try to create something that really works with the young people. As you probably know, most of the people that we reach are seniors and adults, and they in turn work with a lot of young people, but it's not enough. We need the young people to have a curriculum available to them that will engage them with the idea that sustaining the natural order of things is what we need to do to sustain the planet that supports us. Well, that's a problem that's linked with climate change, and we need to get that message out there as well. Uh, I have taught a lot of courses that are based on climate change, and uh, it's clear that climate change and pollinator sustainability are all linked. The two to go together. We can't have one without the other. We need to pitch both. We need to reach all of those people out there that uh, can potentially care and can potentially make decisions in the future that are really important to, um, to our country and to the world. This has now become an international organization. And that's important because this is an international problem. Well, with that, I'll stop. We know what our mission is. Let's carry on. Thank you for listening. And sorry about this, the virtual world, but that's what we live with. I hope to hell we all survive this damn virus. Be, be safe, be well, and take care. And onward for the Pollinator Protection Campaign. Thank you. Hello, I am uh, Maria del Coro Arismendi Arriaga, and I work at the National Autonomous University of Mexico, UNAM. I am here to, to thank NAPSI for the 20 years of collaboration we have already had. The North American uh, Pollinator Protection Campaign is now getting to its 20th birthday, and uh, I want to talk to you a little moment to, to tell you my experience in NAPSI. I have been collaborating with NAPSI for all its history. That means 20 years. It seems that we are, not, we are getting old. We have uh, done many things with NAPSI in these 20 years. Great accomplishments in the protection of pollinators great collaborative work among all the partners that are collaborating in this uh, campaign, great people with different uh, views I have met. I have learned a lot uh, and, and I want to thank NAPSI for that. The Mexican view of pollinator gardens have its seats on NAPSI. Hummingbird gardens in Mexican city have grown a lot and I am glad to say 
that uh, I have been able to affect the government view the last year that, and that they began creating the program called Pollinating Woman in Mexico City. This program mean uh, to have gardens, pollinator gardens, all over the city. Now we, they have more than 50 uh, gardens all over the city where they planted the seeds for plants or that benefit pollinators, all pollinators, hummingbirds and all pollinators. And also they planted uh, food plants that they are using in feeding the, the people around the gardens. So it's a very nice uh, program from the government of Mexico City, a big, huge city with many inhabitants. And I think this program will grow in other cities of Mexico and uh, that uh, are beginning to have interest in making good and nice things uh, uh, the same as the Mexico City. So I think we have many things to do we are working on the planting guides for the Mexico City area and the surroundings and also uh, in the same uh, cooperation with NAPSI to have the, the planting guides for all over the country. We are working with uh, that with other researchers in Mexico and I think it's going to be a very nice project that we will develop in the future. So uh, the only thing I have to say is thank you to NAPSI and thank you for all the collaboration we have grown all over the past years. Thank you. Hello, my name is Kelly Rourke and I'm the Director of Programs and Operations for Pollinator Partnership. I'm not an APSI founder per se, but I have been managing the North American Pollinator Protection Campaign for nearly eight years. In my role, I strive to promote NAPSI's mission, working with the steering committee, task force co-chairs, sponsors, and all NAPSI partner organizations to collaboratively promote pollinators and their habitat across North America. NAPSI's foundation is built on the generosity of our members, and I cannot thank you all enough for dedicating your time, talent, and treasure to this cause over the past 20 years. I was recently on a call with some of our NAPSI leadership asking for additional support and involvement, as I often do, and once said that despite how busy they were, they could help, replying, well, we do it because we love it. And that's what NAPSI is all about. Over the years, I have watched founding partners teach new members the ropes, and I get so excited each year when I scroll through the participant list and see the familiar returning and intriguing new names. I would like to congratulate NAPSI on its 20 years of accomplishments for pollinators. I cannot wait to see what the next 20 years have in store. Thank you for being a part of it.